Get back. Cool looking. Um, I don't want to say I'm in a hurry, but I am in a, a pickle. The bison out on fresh ground as soon as I can because we are running out of it quick. Let me tell you that. Is Big Joe shooting blanks? Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Crossroads Bison. Welcome back to the channel. I've got the skid steer out. I've got the auger. It's time to uh, get to work on Project 189. Here we go again, right? And never, it never stops when you're building fence. Um, but the goal is to get bison on more ground. And I'm kind of, um, I don't want to say I'm in a hurry, but I am in a kind of a, a pickle, a pickled rush, maybe I should say. I don't even know what that is. Uh, quick explaining. Um, it is so dry and we are in this tough, tough drought here in this part of America. Well, uh, I've got ground, but I don't have the fence ready for bison, but I need to get them out because I do not want them destroying these pastures um, that we just put them on. And um, also, you know, if you're running out of grass by July, that's a problem. And I know I'm not the only person uh, that's going through this right now. Cattle, bison, doesn't matter. Uh, we are struggling here in uh, southern Oklahoma, and I know this part of the country is. So I'm going to try to hustle, get some fence done. And uh, so right now it starts right here. I'm going to dig some holes, set some 2 and 7 eighths pipe, and uh, start fence work. It all begins right here. So what we're doing here is uh, this is our new fence that we had, uh, Richard had built for us. You can see the bison right there. That is pasture 2. Pasture one is over there where the yearlings are. This is pasture two. This will be pasture three. It's got a nice pretty pond right here. But this is the new part. Uh, you saw me clear all this brush all the way down this line here. And um, so this is the new stuff. We're gonna come right off of his H post here that he's got set. We're gonna put a down spout right here. So I've got a set of post here. And what, I, what I'm talking about is we do uh, I like this type of um, post work or H brace. How, what do you call it? This fence work with this down bar here and it's braced with this post. These posts are driven in the ground about four feet, maybe six feet in the ground. Uh, but for this situation, uh, because I don't have his post driver, he's busy in the field. We're using the auger. So I'm going to put the down post right here and go from there. Day two, so what I'm doing now is, it is uh, 99 right now, I'm trying to get some work done. I've got to cut some pipe. Luckily, what I did was, before metal got too crazy, don't get me wrong, this was expensive, but before it got too crazy, I bought a bunch of sticks of two and seven eighths. I knew we were gonna need it 
out here for a lot of fencing projects and whatnot and uh, it's good to have a lot because it's hard to find this right now especially at a decent price as many joints as i have so um it's a good thing i've got it because now we we don't have to worry about getting pipe so two and seven eighths pipe and what i'm doing here is uh, i know it's hot and dry and what i did was i've got my got a lot of stuff back here but um i've got my 45 gallon tank and it's got a pump sprayer on it and so i've already wet the ground right here um, where i'm using the torch to uh, cut my joints here and what i'm doing is i'd go through and i mark every nine feet along the joints so you don't have to you can just continue cutting with your torch and uh it doesn't have to be exactly nine feet but um i'm so i went through and marked them and so you could just slide up the joint and then cut them basically as you go and uh the reason nine feet is one i, I dug the holes already which you just saw we're going to be three feet in the ground on this maya come here come on it's just me come on hey girl in my Maya thought she heard my i thought she heard a stranger uh, we put three feet in the ground um, in this case because we're setting them in concrete uh, which will leave um, six feet above which is plenty for what we're doing on this stretch right here and um, I, I like to do that if we drive them in the ground they typically can go four or five feet in the ground sometimes but uh, we've already dug the hole so we're going to concrete these bad boys in but going through here cutting the joints load them on the trailer as I go and then the next thing is after I get these cut, I'll take them down and we'll start concreting them in, let them set for a couple days. That's kind of how all this goes. So, boy, it is hot and I've got to get this done because I'm trying to get the bison out on fresh ground as soon as I can because we are running out of it quick. Let me tell you that. And I don't want to damage what we have. If you're raising animals, I understand what's going on now. So. Uh, we're just bearing through it and so i'm trying to hustle a little bit and get some of this done um so all right stay tuned guys Dunbar. Well, looks like Dunbar had some fun, obviously. Typical Dunbar fashion. I know some of you are going, why didn't you just leave it? Well, there's some big clumps there and put it back in here and crunch it up and <clears throat> stuff smells good. All right, guys, we uh, just put out some uh, Redmond uh, 90 mineral. Um, selenium is the main focus mineral there. Uh, bison 90 uh, made specifically for bison because they got to have that selenium. And it's an important time to have that out right now because we are in a breeding season, hopefully. They need those minerals to um, stay healthy and as we're trying to get the breeding season um, going and making sure 
these females are getting bred. So we are at the Dunbar place. I know you haven't seen them that often. Um, still got the green bunk feeder out here. They are way over here hanging out in the shade and I don't blame them. I'm out here in the middle of the day and it is warm and um, it is rough over here um, too as well. It's very, very dry just like it is everywhere. And um, this is what dryness looks like. There's cracks in the ground and uh, the, the ground is splitting and, and things are brown basically. And it's, uh, it's not good. And the feed helps my main herd right now because there's not a lot of grass. Um, if any and uh, we've got a pasture we've got a paddock in rest right now um, as they're in these two paddocks um, trying to get a little bit of growth but we haven't had any moisture and um, if you don't have any moisture and every day it's 100 101 uh, you're not going to get a lot of growth and uh, we're only halfway through july so uh, hard times in this part of the world this part of america um, this part of Oklahoma. So um, farmers and ranchers are used to these sort of things and um, you just have to get through them. And uh, the main the main thing is, is uh, do the best you can with your animals. And, and the, the last resort that we ever want to deal with in, in these situations is to have to sell our animals. And it, I've just paid attention on social media and whatnot and you can see people having to sell their cattle and lots of lots of cattle going to the sale barns and, and stuff so um, we hope that we don't have to do that that's the the worst case scenario or um, we will never we will never we will not let our animals get in in bad enough shape um, but it's just it's part of our industry part of ranching part of farming and so we'll take it as we go let's uh we're gonna go check all of them, make sure the babies are good, check on Dunbar, see if he's escorting any ladies around right now, and uh, we'll see how they're doing. Let's go. Hey, Eleanor. What's up, Eleanor? You looking pretty. Hanging out in the shadows. Okay. Everybody poop and pee. Sure and get that out of the way. Alright guys, so we are hanging out with the Dunbar herd. Um, I know I've had a subject come up here recently that uh, we need to discuss. And um, basically, I know that um, I've got some things to look at. i got some analyzing to do. Um, because basically at the end of the day, if you're thinking business, um, we're losing out on money. And so what that means is, for an example right here, this cow is called Quapaw. Quapaw is one of my, I'd probably say one of my top cows. I just hopped, hopped in the truck because it was safer, but Quapaw here is one of my top cows, but um, she's bred every year and had, I think, two or three calves now. And um, anyway, she was one of my first cows to ever um, have a baby here at the Dunbar herd. Uh, place. The concern is not the cows. The concern is Big Joe. And uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to get him checked. I've never done this before, but um, we are going to take Big Joe um, to Doc Parsons. Now, I say we're going to take him. We've got to get him bring the whole herd up, get them in our handling system. Now, I don't have a squeeze shoe. I don't have a true bison handling system yet. I'm using what uh, is existing with a little bit of modifications, but there is a lane and there is an alley that uh, I'll should, I should be able to get Big Joe down and loaded up into my trailer. Um, so I've got to get the herd to come up, catch them in our main area, get him in the corral system and then single him out 
hopefully, and get him loaded up on the trailer. And the plan is to take him to Doc Parsons' place, the guy I always talk about all the time. Um, and we are going to, we're going to get Big Joe semen tested. And so I called and talked to Gerald about it, uh, Doc, and he said, well, we can, we can um, test him and see because I've talked to him about how we only have three babies this year. And um, we switched him and Dunbar, who's right down here, uh, out last summer to see if we could get some Big Joe babies and spread his love a little bit more since we only had two of his off offspring. And we knew we were going to eventually take him to the Ponderosa if everything went right, and uh, which it did. We got the land and the plans went through and we took Big Joe over to the Ponderosa. And so this is where we're at. And... Um, Unfortunately, we're going to have to go get him fertility tested, and um, we'll see how it goes. We'll know, and, and, and Doc will be able to tell us right then and there, within about 20 minutes, he said, he'll be able to tell us if he's good or not. And so, fingers crossed that Big Joe um, has is, is good and is fertile. We hope because here's the problem is we are in breeding season. And the reason I, I, I waited is because I wanted to see how many babies we were going to have. And uh, that kind of gives you an inclination of it gives you an idea of where we are. What's the status of uh, the offspring? And right now it's not looking good because basically if these cows aren't getting bred as a farmer rancher, you lose money. Obviously, and this has to do with cattle, sheep, goats, all livestock. Um, you lose out on money if you're not um, having babies. And um, so that's the unfortunate part is that um, I know a lot of you said, you know, you're supposed to get your bulls checked every year. And that's right. And, um, you know, sometimes you do this with bison. I know lots of big time bison producers that don't do this and some that do. So um, obviously now it's important. but um, Big Joe could be shooting blanks, so we don't know, but we do know that he has had babies in the past, and it may have been the change of new cows, it may have been the drought we were in last summer, um, I, there could be lots of things that have caused this, um, but right now he's only with four cows um, at the Ponderosa, um, which, is, which is good, but um, we, we've left Dunbar alone with um, these um nine females for yeah with nine females and uh right now we only got three out of the nine this year that have had babies and that's the lowest we've ever had and then we have two at the ponderosa so uh it doesn't look good and i know i'm sure lots of people have gone through this but it just sucks um because we should have at least eight babies out of this nine um with you know, with the exception of Eleanor, because Eleanor is just Eleanor. You never know what about her. But uh, she's too sweet to, to get rid of, so we'll, we won't be getting rid of Eleanor. And we hope that eventually she does get pregnant again, which she could, and we don't know why she hasn't. So, anyways, that's where we are with Big Joe. Big Joe, hopefully, will be loaded up and taken to Stratford Animal Hospital um, next week. And so... Of course, I'll bring you along on that, and we will know the result of Big Joe here in a couple weeks. So stay tuned on that, guys. Uh, I'll keep you updated, and um, we just literally hope that and, and pray that Big Joe is fertile. And if he's not fertile, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what we're going to do. Um, and hopefully, I don't have to make that decision. Um, if he is not fertile. Um, so we will go from there. And, and something else I want to mention. Something else I do want to mention is, by the way, Yellowstone people, when you're going to Yellowstone, this is safe. This is safe. I'm not outside of my vehicle approaching this cow because that cow right there, she doesn't have a baby right now, but I know that she will run you out of the corral. She'll run you out of the pasture. And that's just who she is. And that's okay. People, if you're at Yellowstone, stay in your vehicles and don't approach these big animals, okay? They will hurt you. Mine, probably not. Well, this one. But those animals are wild, so please be careful. Let's get back to my point. My point is, 
Another reason that something that Big Joe could have lost his uh, fertility um, from is we had a cold, cold snap, one of the coldest snaps we've had in 100 years in Oklahoma two winters ago in the winter of 21, I believe, something like that. And a lot of cattle, bulls, um, bovines, uh, lost um, and were not able to be fertile anymore. They were sterile, actually. Um, a lot of bulls became sterile from that freeze, um, from that cold, cold snap that we had, and it got below zero, to, and we had ice, we had snow. And um, so it dawned on me then, but it, it, I was never thought that bison would go through that. But... And hopefully Dunbar is doing his job. And these three babies, we won't know on these three babies who their parents are until we pull hair on them, which I've talked about before. And we'll pull hair on them. Um, usually about November is when we work them. We'll pull, we'll pull the hair on them and then um, we'll send it off. And that takes a while to get all that. So let's see what this guy's up to. Hey, 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 get back, get back. Let me shut the gate. Get back. Hooligan. I'll get you a drink of water. Big old guy. <laughs> You're a mess. Well, I we'll started to head back up to the front gate to, to uh, get out and they all ran up here with me and i thought they were just uh running to the water but no they were running because they wanted out so anyways <laughs> dunbar he always has to come inspect things aren't going great here um and uh, uh just like i talked about i know a lot of people are going through this right now farming and ranching wise but um it's hot it's dry here there's no rain there's no grass we're actually having to feed. We just had um, our little hay meta here um, bailed and we're already having to use hay um, in July. Guys, that's never good if you're having to use hay in July. And uh, we're doing that right now because they need roughage. They've got the feeder, which will help supplement them and keep these mamas and everyone healthy um, during breeding season. Uh, but we're having to supplement with hay uh, as well. And that's something good in July. Um, and then I got the problem with Big Joe. So it's um, things are tough right now. And uh, think about all the farmers and ranchers out there that are dealing with the drought and um, the fertility thing. We'll deal with that. So stay tuned, guys, for Big Joe. He's going over there next week and uh, to Doc Parsons. Hopefully we get him up there, get him caught, and I get him loaded. That's always the number one thing with bison. And uh, as much as we're around them and stuff, it shouldn't be a problem, but I never like messing with Big Joe, to be honest. You can go back and watch some of my footage of working Big Joe. The first time we ever weighed him, uh, first time he ever went in a squeeze shoot at a, as a five-year-old bull. Anyways, thank you guys for watching us. We'll keep you updated. Stay tuned with us. And uh, thank you guys for watching us. We'll see you soon.